Praise the Lord, everyone. Come on in. It's Monday night. It's Faith Talk Monday. Come on in. I'm looking to see when we get us a few people in. We're going to go ahead and go live. I hope y'all are ready tonight. I hope you read chapters three, four, and five. They still weren't very long, but uh, it, it gave us what we needed. Come on in, everybody. Let's see. I can see a little better on my cell phone what's happening here. Let's see. I don't see anybody in yet. Sister Deja, do you know if anybody's in? Hmm. Oh, so today she says seven people are in. I don't see them. I don't even see them on the face Facebook um, page, and that's where I am. I see it says nine people. Okay, here we go. Praise the Lord. I see Sister Pat Simmons, Sister Cheryl Morton. Praise the Lord, y'all. Sister Pat Geis, Sister Eleanor Faye, Sister Charlesetta Pittman. Thank you so much for my gift, Sister Charlesetta. I appreciate that. Sister Sandra Tolden Reeves. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord, Sister Lynetta. All right. We're going live. We are live. We are live. Just one second and we're going to get started here. Sure, we're in here good. Okay, Sister Kim, Sister Danita, Sister Shanta, Sister Shannon, Shannon Shante. Praise the Lord, everybody. Sister Diana Richie, I talked to your mom today, Sister Richie. Talk to Mother Richie. <laughs> Good to see everybody on. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to go ahead and get started. Praise the Lord, Sister Linda Glover. Uh, we know that we are in our book tonight. But I want to say greetings and praise the Lord, everybody. It is indeed another marvelous Monday. I'm going to move this little private chat here down. Okay. And we are grateful to God for his love, for his care, and his tender mercies toward us. Amen. Somebody say amen if you're happy about it. Yes. Um, I, I want to thank you for your love, your support, and your prayers. Uh, during my time of bereavement, your kindness toward me is just wonderful. I appreciate everything that you've done for me. It's hard to even say thank you enough for what you've done. Um, and I also want to say thank you for the gifts of love for pastor's appreciation. I appreciate, I appreciate that. People don't have to be kind. Uh, Bishop Johnson used to always say it's nice to be nice. So thank you for being nice and kind to me. But we're going to get started tonight in chapter three first, and we're going to start off with a scripture, Galatians 6 and 9 from the Message Bible, and Sister Deja is going to put that up for me. And it says, so let's not allow ourselves to get fatigued doing good. At the right time, we will harvest a good crop if we don't give up or quit. Somebody type in the comments, don't give up. Don't give up. We can't give up now. You've come too far. The Lord has brought you too far for you to give up. All right? So you type in the comments, don't give up. That's the first scripture that I want us to talk about because chapter three is entitled, Don't Quit. If you keep quitting, or are always giving up, you will never win. You cannot win if you quit. <laughs> life is hard uh, if we keep fighting. Life is hard when you keep quitting. I'm going to say that one more time. Life is hard if we keep fighting. Life is hard when you keep quitting. Guess what I want to say to you tonight? Pick your heart. Which one do you want to do? Do you want to pick a fighter that sometimes life is hard, but you get to win? Or are you just going to give up and always lose and it still be hard? 
pick your pick your heart pick your heart sis somebody type in the comments pick your heart <laughs> the difference between the two is one brings victory and the other just a life of sadness disappointment and a hard life when you choose the opposite so we know that if we keep fighting and we don't quit that victory is on the other side eventually we're going to get there because we know that trouble don't last always and we know that weeping may endure for a night but joy comes in the morning and that's a promise from god and because of that we know that eventually god is going to bring us out god is going to show himself strong because that's who he is He's a big God. He's a strong God. He's our God. And we have to trust him and believe that he has our best interests at heart. And because we believe that, we keep on trying and we keep on going and we keep on moving. Amen. All right. So you will never have anything good in life if you keep quitting. Somebody type in the comments, stop quitting. <laughs> Just stop it. Stop it. Stop quitting. Over here on God's side, the only way through is to grow through it. You got to go through it and you want to grow through it. If we grow through it while we're going through it, we'll get through it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was writing and I said, well, look at that, Jesus. He said, if we grow through it while we go through it, get through it. Do you want to get through it? Do anybody tonight want to get through it? I want to get through it. I want to get to the other side. All right. We know trials and tests are going to come. And even when we conquer one area, there's always going to be another area that God is going to allow to come into our lives so that we can conquer that one as well. He doesn't bring tests and trials for you to fail, although you will fail sometimes because we all do. But he didn't bring them there for you to fail. He brought them there for you to learn and to grow and to mature and to become better than who you are today. Amen. All right. So it's easy to quit, but it takes faith and trust in God to go through a thing. And that's what chapter three is really talking about when she's talking about not quitting. Now, I want to go. Here's our book. Here's our book. Sister Deja, put our book up. If you don't have your book, get your book. This is Battlefield of the Mind, Joyce Meyer. Get your book if you don't have it. We are just starting off, so you haven't missed much. But I'm going to read from, uh, from page 37. There's an excerpt there that I want to read, and it's uh, the subtitle says, Don't Give Up. It says, when the battle seems endless and you think you'll never make it, remember that you are reprogramming a very carnal, fleshly, worldly mind to think as God thinks. So you are asking God to take this mind and to make it new and to give him your thoughts. That is something that we have to ask God for because there are some things that we're gonna encounter that we have no clue what to do with. You're going to encounter some stuff that you have no idea how to handle it. And you're going to have to ask God to give you his perspective and his mind and his view and what it is he thinks about a thing. And it says, so you're reprogramming a very carnal, fleshly, worldly mind to think as God thinks. Is it impossible? No, it is not. Is it difficult? Yes, it is. Somebody shake your head. Mm -hmm. You watching, just shake your head. You ain't got to tighten it. Just shake your head. It's difficult. It's difficult to take these minds that we have lived with for 25, 35, 45, 55. I see my mother-in-law is on 84 years. <laughs> All these years, we've been thinking a particular way and God wants to transform our minds. So is it difficult sometimes for our minds to be transformed when we've, when we've been a particular kind of way for a long period of time yes but is it impossible absolutely not that's what she said it says but just think you have god on your team i believe he is the best computer programmer around your mind is like a computer and that that has i'm sorry that has had a lifetime of garbage programmed into it god is working on you at least he is if you have invited him to have control of your thoughts. 
sometimes we sit up there and I don't know why I keep going through this because you ain't asking the Lord to help your mind, sis. Ask him to help your mind. Type in the comments, help my mind, Jesus, <laughs> because we need him to help us. It will definitely take time and it won't all be easy, but you are going in the right direction. If you choose God's way of thinking, you will spend your time doing something. So it may as well be going forward and not staying in the same mess for the rest of your life. Don't stay in the mess. <laughs> Don't stay in the mess. Go on and type it in. You know I'm going to say it. Don't stay in the mess <laughs> for the rest of your life. We want to evolve into the one that God has us to become. He knows the potential that you have, all right? But we have to allow him to deal with our minds. Then in chapter four, it is entitled Little by Little, Little by Little. Take baby steps. When I saw the little by little, all I could think of was take baby steps. Take baby steps, sis. Sometimes people think that you're supposed to have this radical change overnight. Baby, you didn't get that way overnight. It's not going to change overnight. Now, can a miracle happen? Absolutely. Can God do a miracle? Yes, he can work a miracle. There's nothing that God can't do. But you need to understand that you did not become the way that you are overnight. And so therefore, it's going to take uh, experiences and trials and tests so that the things that have been worked in us over the years can be worked out of us because God wants to work some stuff out of us. He don't want it there. All right. But little by little is the title of chapter four. The author lets us know that renewing our minds takes place little by little. So don't get discouraged when progress seems slow. We live in a and a and I want it now world. You know, everything is so quick, everything so fast. We get upset when we can't get through things fast. If you can't get through a drive through fast, if you can't get through the checkout line fast, if you can't get your phone to pull up whatever you're trying to pull it up fast, whatever it is, we want it now, we want it fast. That's because we have come we have turned into a world that doesn't wait for anything. And so we're impatient in everything. But progress, even when it's slow. It's still progress, okay? Suffering comes with having a renewed mind. Suffering burns off the old man's way of thinking. Let's look at page 42. Page 42. Y'all with me? Type in the comments, I'm with you. Page 42. And, and this, this little serpent, uh, excerpt, serpent, ex, excerpt on this page says when you fail which you will and i just got finished telling you because sometimes you will fail when you fail which you will that doesn't mean that you are a failure you are not a failure okay you might have failed but you are not a failure i need you to remember that it simply means that you don't do everything right it simply means that you don't do everything right. Do you know that there is absolutely nobody under the sun that does everything right? That's called a perfect person. They don't exist, sis. I mess up. You mess up. Everybody mess up. Your husband mess up. Your children mess up. Your pastor mess up. Your first lady mess up. We all mess up. We all do things and say things and think things sometimes that we should not. So what do we need? Jesus, when do we need him? Now. <laughs> Y'all might as well just go on and type it in. We need Jesus. When? Now. We need him right now. How often do we need him? Every day. <laughs> I feel like a cheerleader today. Today, we need Jesus. She's helping us to remember that. And then uh, she, she also wrote at the end of that little excerpt, I repeat, don't receive, I'm sorry, I didn't finish it all. We all have to accept the fact that along with strengths, we also have weaknesses. Just let Christ be strong in your weaknesses. 
Let him be your strength on your weekdays. Lord have mercy. Don't I know something about that? I know something about him being your strength on weekdays. Because some days, especially recently here, I've been super, super tired. Feel like I can't get enough rest. But then when I do lay down to rest, I can't sleep. And it's just uh, a lot. So, yeah, we need him to be our strength when we're weak. Chapter four also reminds us that in this battlefield for our minds not to get discouraged. I'm going to ask Sister Deja to put up Psalm 42 and five. Yes, in the New Living Translation, it says, why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my savior and my God. Now, I know y'all know that scripture from the King James Version. Why am I cast down all my soul? Why art thou disquieted in me? I will hope in God. And so the, the New Living Translation made it even more plainer. I said, why am I discouraged? We get discouraged. Why is my heart so sad? We do get sad. We do have those feelings. But it also said, I will put then after, after it got finished saying those things, the next thing is, I will put my hope where? In God. I will praise him again. This is what you call talking to yourself, okay? It's a lot of people that talk to themselves. It's a lot of people that say a lot of things to themselves. But you're going to have to learn that whenever negativity and doubt and fear, when you can hear those things in your head, you have to combat it with the word of God. And you have to combat it with positivity. Don't allow your mind to take you to a place that you can't get out of. There, the depression can become a place that you don't, you don't even know how to get out anymore. You don't even know how to get up from it. You ever been there? Anybody ever been there? If you've been there, you can say, I've been there. You know why? Because we've all been in that place at some time. Okay. But we have to learn to speak over yourself, encourage yourself in the Lord. Talk back to yourself and talk back to the devil because he'd be talking to you too. Just like he talked to Eve. He be talking to you too, okay? Yes, I see my niece, Sheikah's on here. Hey, girl. That's right, Toy. When you do get there, you have to talk to yourself and encourage yourself in the Lord, through the word, through music, through so many things. But you, you got you to gotta change. You got to do something different. You can't stay there, all right? Uh, discouragement destroys hope. So the devil tries to discourage us by telling uh, telling us what a horrible child of God we are. You know, that sounds like an oxymoron. But yes, he tells us what a horrible job we're doing. He would tell us things like, we're a big disappointment. We God, we don't please God. We're not pleasing God. He'll tell us stuff like, we always messing up. and We always tripping up. Why do you keep doing this? He'll say stuff like, he'll magnify the times that we do fail. He magnifies them and then tries to get us to believe that we are a failure and you're not. Without hope, we give up. You have to have hope. You have to have hope. Everybody has to have something that they put their hope in in order to keep going. All right. We have to have it. And when we get discouraged, we lose a little bit of hope. And the more discouraged we get, we lose a little bit more of hope until we have no hope. And when we have no hope, we have no drive. We have no drive. We don't even want to live. We don't think that the things that we do matter. We don't think that the people around us care. And people fall into places uh, uh, like, like suicide, suicidal ideations and begin to think about suicide because they think they don't even matter. They think that their presence means absolutely nothing. They think that if they are gone, no one is going to care. That's losing hope. That's losing hope. And we rebuke that in the name of Jesus. You are important. You do have purpose. And there's a whole lot of people that need you to be here doing what God has called you to do. The devil is a lie. Don't let him talk to you like that, sis. All right. Uh, I'm going to read another excerpt on page 43. This is a little longer. Bear with me, please. When discouragement and condemnation tries to overtake you, examine your thought life. How are you thinking? What kind of thoughts have you been thinking? Have they sounded something like this? I'm not going to make it. This is too hard. 
I will. I always fail. It has always been the same. Nothing ever changes. I'm sure other people don't have this much trouble getting their minds renewed. Sometimes we think that we're different. That's why it's so important to share your testimony. It's so important to tell other people how God is bringing you out and what you're going through. Because when they realize that other people are going through the same thing, then they don't. They won't let the enemy tell them that they're the mess up. We all have issues. So we have to understand that it's important to share what you're going through so people don't have to feel alone. Amen. Give me a good amen. All right. And it says, uh, I may as well give up. I'm tired of trying. I pray, but it seems as if God doesn't hear. He probably doesn't answer my prayers because he is so disappointed in the way I act the devil. If this example represents your thoughts, it is no wonder you get discouraged or come under condemnation. Remember, you become what you think. Think discouraging thoughts and you'll get discouraged. Think condemning thoughts and you'll come under condemnation. Change your thinking and be set free. Instead of thinking negatively, think like this. And she gave us the alternative to some of those thoughts. Well, Things are going a little slow, but thank God I'm making some progress. I'm sure I'm on. I'm sure glad I'm on the right path that will lead me to freedom. I had a rough day yesterday. I choose wrong thinking all. I chose wrong thinking all day long. Father, and then you go into prayer. Forgive me and help me to keep on keeping on. I made a mistake, but at least. That is one mistake I won't have to make again. This is a new day. You love me, Lord. Your mercies are new every morning. Those are the types of ways we need to be talking to ourselves. We can confess and say, Lord, I did it. Lord, I said it. Lord, I acted a donkey. You know, I acted, I, I did what I should have done. I, and then after you confess it, say, Lord, I need you to help me because I want to serve you. I want to please you. I want to be who you called me to be. Start talking about what God said. And then it says, I refuse to be discouraged. I refuse to be condemned. Father, the Bible says that you don't condemn me. You sent Jesus to die for me. I'll be fine. Today will be a great day. You help me choose right thoughts today, every day. We need God to help us choose right thoughts. All right. We start asking ourselves things like, what's the point? Why am I even continuing to try? Um, one of the examples that came to my mind while I was studying is um, uh, uh, a health journey. Anybody on a health journey? Anybody want to get healthy? Anybody trying to eat right? Anybody trying to exercise? Anybody trying to drink that water? Anybody trying to do right? If you are, say, it's me, it's me, it's me. If you're on a health journey and you're really trying to do this thing, Say it's me. I want to see in the comments. I'm looking. Where you at? Who I'm talking to? I'm a, I'm not going forward till I see a it's me. I'm going to start with the it's me. All right, Sister Brenda Meeks. It's you. All right, it's me too, sis. Ah, Sister Deja said it's her too. All right, Sister Donna. Okay, Sister Toy. Okay, Sister Pat. Okay, okay. So, when you're on a health journey, and you're, you know, you're being mindful of what you eat, what you drink and trying to get your exercises in, trying to get your steps in. You're doing all those things and you mess up and you had a piece of cake and you mess up and you eat that chocolate or you mess up and you eat that cookie. I need you to understand that one mess up, that's, that's just a mess up. Don't allow the one mess up to ruin your entire day. Don't allow one thing to become the whole thing. It's not the whole thing. The devil wants you to think it's the whole thing. So what we do is when we're in our health journey and we mess up in the morning, we be like, oh, Lord, I done messed up. I might as well eat this and I might as well eat that. And I might as well do this. And I might, well, I done messed up. So I might as well just, no, you might as well not. You better stop that foolishness. No, you might as well not. One moment is not all day long. You better, you better not do it. Somebody type in the comments, help me, Jesus. Because 
We all have done it. I have done it. I have felt like a day is shot because I messed up one time in the day. Not because I was eating that way all day, but I have. I, we have to understand that the enemy would have us to think that just because you messed up once, all right, well, it's all over now. Ain't no hope for you. <laughs> Come on now. Come on, sis. There is hope for you. There is hope for you. Sister Linnell said she bought a whole cake last night. Help Jesus. Help. A whole cake, not a slice. Not, not one slice. You trying to eat on the whole cake all day, Sister Lynetta. I said Lanita. Lanetta. Y'all help me. They twins. Oh, uh, yes. What is you doing buying a whole cake? That's not what y'all pray, pray for Sister Lanetta Capers. <laughs> okay. But I need us to understand it's the same way in our walk with God. Just because we messed up, we tripped up, we did something we shouldn't have did. It doesn't mean that your life is over and you just need to walk back out into the world and live any old kind of way. The devil is a lie. Stop that foolishness. Stop that foolishness. If you don't get up and see that that thing, see that thing for what it is. It's a moment in time, not a lifetime. It is a moment in time, not a lifetime. Body type, get up, sis. Just get up. Get up, Sister Lynetta. I need you to get up. Get rid of that cake. Take that cake to somebody else. Somebody on Sunday for Pastor's Wife Appreciation gave me some wonderful, wonderful, wonderful chocolates. And you know, I'm trying to do right. So I don't keep chocolates in my house. But she gave me two bags. I was like, really? She didn't just give me one bag. She gave me two bags. I said, that's all right. I'm giving this other bag to somebody. Now, of course, I love this candy, but I know that if I have two bags in the house, I'm going to be tempted to eat the two bags, right? So we're going to give that bag away to somebody. And then, you know, I'm probably going to eat a couple out of that one and then get a, that bag. I, I can't. I can't. I can't. Why would you give me two bags of candy? <laughs> but yes, get up, sis. Because you can do it. You can make it. Chapter five. Last one. Chapter five is entitled, and I got three minutes left. Y'all pray. Chapter five is entitled, Be Positive. Read page 47 is what I wrote. So let's read page 47. And it says, positive minds produce positive lives. Negative minds produce negative lives. Positive thoughts are always full of faith and hope. Negative thoughts are always full of fear and doubt. Some people are afraid to hope because they have been hurt so much in life. They have had so many disappointments. They don't think they can face the pain of another one. Have you ever been through that? Where you was hurt so bad that you was like, yeah, no, nah, I ain't doing that never ever again in life. Ain't nobody going to get a chance to hurt me like that no more. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? I've been there. I've been there. It says some people are afraid. They have had so many disappointments. They don't think they can face the pain of another one. Therefore, they refuse to hope so they won't be disappointed. This avoidance of hope is a type of protection against being hurt. Disappointment hurts. That's what she wrote. Does it hurt, sis? Absolutely, it hurts. Disappointment hurts. So rather than be hurt again, many people simply refuse to hope or to believe that anything good will ever happen to them. This type of behavior sets up a negative lifestyle. Everything becomes negative because the thoughts are negative. Every, mm -hmm. And remember the scripture in Proverbs 23 and 7, and she doesn't have to put this up. But it says that for as as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Oh, so we need to make sure we understand that it is it, we are going to become whatever we think. <laughs> now, I will say you can't just think skinny. You got to do something. OK, you got to actually do something. You can't just think skinny. Now, what you can do, though, is you can envision yourself being skinny. You can envision yourself eating the right thing. You can envision yourself. But in order to actually be skinny, in order to be healthy, you ain't got to be skinny. Just to be healthy because skinny does not denote healthy. But in order to be healthy, 
you got to actually do something. Say, put some, put some action to it. Type it in the comments. Put some action. Put some action in. Put some action. Okay? We need action. Action speak louder than words. Okay? The author helps us to examine how we respond when negative things happen to happens to us. She wants us to remember that all things work together for our good. A flexibly minded person is a healthy person. When I say a flexibly minded person, that means that you have to be flexible in your life. If you are rigid, if you are completely rigid and this is how it has to be, everything has to be this way. It can't be any other way. I don't, I don't do it like this. I do it like this. I do it. When you get like that, you want everybody to do it a particular kind of way because this, and then when something happens, that's not the way you plan for it to be. You can't handle it. That means you're not flexible. You need to understand that things are going to happen and things are going to come up and plans are going to change. And you got to be able to say, you know what? Well, maybe that was the best thing anyway. You know, somebody say they're going to go out to dinner with you. A friend is going to meet you for dinner. They back out. They cancel. Look at it like, oh, I get to get some sleep tonight. Or look at it as, oh, I can watch a movie I hadn't watched. You know, you can it's, you can put a positive spin on anything, sis. It don't have to be negative. It don't have to be, oh, they didn't want to go out with me. Wonder why. They upset with me. Why? You know, they want to hang out with their other friends. You know, don't go to the negative. Stay in the positive. Take it as a time for you to do something for you. All right? A flexibly minded person. They don't freak out when plans change. They understand that God is keeping watch over them and he is in control of everything that we do. And we have absolutely nothing to fear. And I wrote here, read page 49. I'm almost done, y'all. I'm going to let y'all go in a minute. At 49. And it says, in Romans 12 and 16, the Apostle Paul tells us to readily adjust ourselves to people and things. The idea is that we must learn to become the kind of person who plans things, but who doesn't fall apart if the plans don't work out. Recently, I had an excellent opportunity to practice this principle. Dave and I were in Lake Worth, Florida. We had been ministering there for three days and we were packing and getting ready to go to the airport to go home. I had planned to wear slacks and a blouse with flat shoes so I could be comfortable during the return trip. How many know women want to be comfortable? Because I want to be comfortable, especially on a flight. And she said, I started getting dressed and couldn't find my slacks. We looked all over the place and finally found them in the bottom of the closet. They had slipped off the hanger and were terribly wrinkled. And she talked about how she had the steamer. She tried to steam them. She put them on. They still looked a mess. So she didn't want to wear them. But she said, my only other choice was a dress and high heels. That wouldn't have been my choice. They would have got them wrinkled pants that day. You hear me? <laughs> I'm not wearing no dress and no high heels on no plane if I can help it. <laughs> um. I could feel, and she said, I could feel my emotions getting upset with the situation. You see, anytime we don't get what we want, our feelings rise up and try to get us into self-pity and a negative attitude. I recognized immediately that I had a choice to make. Somebody say, I have a choice. Type it in the comments. I have a choice. I have a choice. Type it in there. I have a choice. If you got a choice, I want you to type, I have a choice. That's right, Sister Pat. They would have got them wrinkled pants that day. <laughs> I'm waiting on somebody to say you got a choice. All right. All right, niece. I have a choice. So let, let's talk about her choice. She said, she said, uh, I had the choice to make. Be irritable because things hadn't worked out the way I wanted them to. Or I could just adjust myself to the situation and go ahead and enjoy the trip home. I would have put on them wrinkle pants and I would have took my comfortable self on that plane and I would have been happy. <laughs> now, I think she said she put the heels on and the skirt on and went on and, and enjoyed her trip home, but I wouldn't have been able to enjoy it that much and no high heels and a skirt. I'm just <laughs> how about you today? I don't know. <laughs> um, but yes. So that was her example of when things happen that you don't plan for. And I know you've been there. I know you've been there where you had some plan and it all just fell apart because this didn't happen or this person didn't do this or you forgot to do this. Stuff happens all the time. And so then you got to 
You gotta be flexible. Somebody type in the comments, be flexible. I'm flexible. I'm flexible because you know, if it don't work, then we're just gonna have to do something else. All right. Being positive, being positive takes mental work and thought. It's easy to complain, but it 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 won't help the situation or make you feel better to complain. It's not gonna help. And no one wants to be around negative people. Negative people make, bring negative energy that makes everybody else feel blah. Nobody wants to be around people who feel blah that's going to pull everybody else into their dungeon. Okay? So don't don't feel bad when people don't want to fool with you because you ain't going to do nothing but complain. Don't nobody want to hear that mess. <laughs> Read page 51 and 52 and then we have a scripture and we're done. Let's see. I think. Let me make sure for how long we're done. Oh, we got a little bit more. Okay. 51 through 52. I think it goes from 51 to 52. It says, I face reality and I encourage you to do the same. If you are sick, don't say I'm not sick because that's just not true. But you can say, I believe God is healing me. You don't have to say, <laughs> now listen to this. You don't have to say, I'll probably get worse and I'm going to end up in the hospital. Instead, you can say God's healing power is working in me right now, and I believe I'm going to be all right. It is unwise to refuse to face reality. However, if our reality is negative, we can still have a positive attitude toward it. Always be ready mentally to face whatever comes, believing that God works all things. How many things, y'all? He works all things out for our good. Amen. Death, loss, sickness, disease, no matter what it is, he works it out. It's going to be all right. Okay. First uh, Peter 3 and 10. And I believe I gave that scripture to Sister Deja. First Peter 3 and 10. And it says, for the scriptures say, if you want to enjoy life and see many happy days, Keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. I'm going to read that one more time. If you want to enjoy life and see many happy days, who want to see some happy days? Then keep your tongue from speaking evil. Watch your mouth, sis, and your lips from telling lies. Close your mouth, sis. Tell the truth. Just tell the truth. Tell the truth. Y'all hear y'all pastor in the background? Y'all hear him? He in the background talking. <laughs> All right. God has given us assignments throughout the scriptures. Assignments to speak life, to be positive, and to know that all things work together for our good. He gives us promises of an expected end. He knows what he's doing. And so many more. There's so many more promises in his word. So sisters, it all starts in your mind. It all starts in your mind. Next week, we will be going over chapters six and seven. And I'm nine minutes over my time. Six and seven, not six, seven and eight, because eight goes into the second second uh, part. So we're just going to do six and seven next week. Um, if you don't have your book, I need y'all to start posting. I'm trying to figure out why y'all ain't posting. Because I know y'all got these books. <laughs> I know y'all got these books. So my time with God. This is our 365 day devotional. We're going to be doing this every day, y'all. You can post. Even if even, I don't post every day. But I thank God for Sister Jackie Barton. And I thank God for Sister Brenda. Uh, I hadn't seen anything from Sister Deja lately. I hadn't seen anything from Sister Ophelia. But they do post. But I need some of y'all to jump on in. Um, let me start naming some people. Sister Lynetta. Sister Janetta. Sister Dorchelle, Sister uh, Nicole, Sister San Antonio Reed. I see you comment sometimes, Sister San Antonio. Sheikah, I need y'all. I need y'all to start posting the devotional and what you're getting out of it. Okay? I love y'all so much. Now, look, if I do not see you here and I do not see you there, I pray I see every last one of y'all where? In the air. God bless y'all. I love y'all.